My name is Roger Veer. I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in cryptocurrency startups and Bitcoin specifically, of course. And today I'm the CEO of Bitcoin.com and promoting Bitcoin Cash as uh, the best digital currency for the entire world to use as a currency. I definitely can be a bit of a polarizing figure. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to urge people to think for themselves, look at the evidence and evaluate the situation and decide for themselves. You don't need me or, or any politician or anybody else for that matter to tell you how to live your life and what to think and what to do. Think for yourself. That's why you have a mind inside your head. I hold a whole bunch of Bitcoin, and by Bitcoin, of course, I mean Bitcoin Cash, because that's, if you read the original white paper and the definition given of Bitcoin, there's maybe, I don't know, eight different things, 10 different things that you can come up with that define Bitcoin, and uh, pretty much all but one of those, Bitcoin Cash has more than the BTC fork of Bitcoin. The only thing that BTC has that makes it Bitcoin is it has more hash rate and the longest you know, chain with the, the most proof of work on top of it. But the fact that it's no longer usable as a peer-to-peer -peer digital current or electronic cash system, which is the very title of the original Bitcoin white paper, I, I don't think that BTC's claim to Bitcoin is very strong. But at the end of the day, lots of people and businesses and exchanges are still referring to BTC as Bitcoin. So that's worth something as well. But uh, and so to answer your question directly, I do still hold some BTC as well, um, but the vast majority I've traded for Bitcoin Cash because it's useful as cash. And I'm much, much more bullish about the future of Bitcoin Cash than I am about the future of BTC. And I remember back in 2011 when I started telling the world, pay attention to Bitcoin. This is gonna change everything and you better go out and buy some Bitcoin right now. People mocked me and laughed at me and said I was you know, stupid and I'm throwing my money away. And many people make those exact same arguments about Bitcoin Cash today. But uh, I wasn't deterred in 2011 when I started promoting Bitcoin to begin with. And I'm still promoting the exact same version of Bitcoin that I started promoting in 2011. But that's Bitcoin Cash. Any investor knows to diversify their portfolio. So you don't put, if you go and invest in the stock market, you don't only buy one stock and no other ones at all. You hold a basket of, uh, of assets and the same is smart with cryptocurrencies as well. BTC, BCH of course, uh, Ethereum, Monero, Dash, Litecoin, uh, no Litecoin, um, Zcoin, Zcash, a couple of others. I'd have to look, I have a bunch of tokens on Ethereum. So, uh, actually, a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, I I think you could say I was the second person ever involved in Ripple. So Jed McCaleb decided to start it, and then he reached out to me for some funding. So I put up the seed money to start Ripple, but I don't pay close attention to what's going on in the Ripple ecosystem today. But I, I wish every cryptocurrency good luck, to be honest. Uh, the more useful cryptocurrencies in the world we have, the better. Uh, competition leads to better results at uh, you know, a higher quality product at a lower price. So the same is true of cryptocurrencies. Let a, let a thousand flowers bloom. No, I don't think the majority of crypto uh, coin users believe that, but I think the majority of crypto coin users have been brainwashed by the censorship happening within the Bitcoin community. If you go to our Bitcoin on Reddit, which is the number one discussion platform for the cryptocurrency stuff or Bitcoin stuff in the entire world, and it probably gets more traffic than every single other discussion platform combined. So it's an incredibly important uh, platform. It's been completely censored for about three years now. Not only censored, but they literally will manipulate posts to make the somebody posting something look like it ha they're agreeing to the exact opposite thing of what they're actually agreeing to. So anybody, I implore them to go and Google Bitcoin censorship. And there's a couple of articles out there written by uh, John Block is the, the pen name. And it'll just be mind blowing when you see that. So, uh, you know, a lot of people used to think that, uh, you know, without the church and the government running everything, the whole world would fall apart. And now people are realizing that that's not true. And I, I think as time goes on, people will be able to figure out the truth that uh, cryptocurrencies should be usable as a currency. And the BTC community are a bunch of censorship worshiping totalitarians that don't understand the economic code that made Bitcoin successful in the first place. Everybody's heard of Bitcoin. And the people that aren't deep into cryptocurrency, they don't realize that the coin that everybody's calling Bitcoin today isn't the Bitcoin that was invented in 2009. It isn't the Bitcoin that got adoption in you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's Bitcoin, but Bitcoin in name only today. The real Bitcoin that actually has the characteristics that made Bitcoin popular to begin with is uh, alive and well in the form of Bitcoin Cash. And for anybody that is unsure of, of that or the arguments that I'm making, I invite them to go and uh, look for a Bitcoin faucet. And in the early days, and myself and just about everybody else, we received our first Bitcoin, BTC, back in you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13. 
from a Bitcoin faucet that would just give you know a few cents of Bitcoin to anybody who wanted some out there on the internet. Uh, Bitcoin faucets are now impossible on the BTC chain. Bitcoin faucets are alive and well on the Bitcoin cash chain. So anybody that wants some free Bitcoin cash can go to free.bitcoin.com, for example, and you get about a dime's worth of Bitcoin cash for free. That's impossible to do on BTC today. And so I think that's another example of how Bitcoin cash has the economic code that initially made Bitcoin a success. And it's a bit of a shame that in the public's mind, they've all heard of Bitcoin, but they don't realize the coin that everybody's calling Bitcoin today isn't Bitcoin. It's, it's something else entirely. For me, if Bitcoin or digital currencies are supposed to be, you know, uncensorable currencies, why is the BTC community going around censoring all sorts of discussion about what's supposed to be an uncensorable currency? If you believe it, if you believe in it as an uncensorable currency, don't censor discussion about it. And that's exactly what's been happening within the BTC community for uh, nearly three years now. I think each individual owns themselves and that you have inalienable natural rights that are inherent within your being. And even if a bunch of other people get together and say that we're all gonna take a vote to violate your natural rights, that doesn't make it okay. Just like, you know, all, all the greatest crimes in human history were uh, pretty much all of them were legal and they were done with the law and many of them were done by democratically elected governments as well. I think the decentralization is just a tool to give the system censorship resistance. And by censorship resistance, I mean each individual has 100% complete control over their little tiny corner of the blockchain and the assets that they control on it. And, and to me, I think that that's much more empowering than the individual, than the right to vote with a million other individuals. And if the rest of the people vote against you, what good did that do you? Whereas with Bitcoin, if the rest of the world votes against what I can do with my Bitcoin, it doesn't matter. Two plus two always equals four. And no amount of voting changes the underlying mathematical characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin. I think most full nodes are running in data centers around the world, and I, I think that's just fine. There's plenty of Amazon nodes, and we, at Bitcoin.com, we have lots of nodes hosted by Alibaba, we have lots of nodes hosted by Amazon, we have lots of nodes hosted all over the world, and I, I think that's just fine. And I, I think a lot of people get hung up on this whole idea that they, they view decentralization as a goal in and of itself, and decentralization is not the goal. Decentralization is simply the tool that we use to achieve our ends. And our ends, in this case, from my point of view, is censorship resistance, meaning each individual has control of their own digital assets. It doesn't matter if the network is you know, beautifully 100% decentralized. We just need enough decentralization so that each individual has control of their own little piece of their blockchain. Ethereum has a lot of stuff going for it as well. There's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of businesses, a lot of stuff being built on top of it. Bitcoin Cash very well may surpass Ethereum again in the future. Um, I would guess that it's more likely to than not, but you never know, right? I'm predicting the future is really, really, really hard. Um, but I hold significantly more Bitcoin Cash than Ethereum because I think Bitcoin Cash has a better chance of getting more adoption around the world and, and bringing more economic freedom to the world. And there's a bunch of competitors to both Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum at this point. There's a thousand one different altcoins out there competing for market share. I think that we're gonna see digital currencies get more and more market share. If they'll eventually crowd out fiat currencies altogether, I can hope so, but I don't know for sure. And uh, this is you know, brand new territory for the whole world. And uh, if I was able to see a little bit farther than others and a little bit earlier than others, it was because I stood on the shoulders of giants previously. And uh, at this point, I, I don't think anybody knows. All we can do is speculate and, uh, and hope.